Well, Claire, so nice to meet you. How is your day so far? Oh, it's been an amazing day, in spite of the rain. I'm here with my daughter, and we visited the Van Gogh Museum yesterday and when we arrived, and today we've been to the Anna Frank Museum, which I really wanted my daughter to see. I was here 25 years ago, so a very long time ago. Well, my father was a musician. He was a jazz pianist and a, and a wonderful musician. So I grew up with music in the home every day of my life. And I always sang. I always wanted to sing and I always sang. I had piano lessons from being quite young and I was okay. But most of the time, instead of practicing, I would be playing songs and singing. Um, and eventually my mum and dad let me have singing lessons when I was given a part in a musical at school and it was my English teacher that heard me singing at school and said come here I want you to sing for me and it went from there so just lucky support support from my teacher support from my family and just a love of, of music and singing and that's never changed what was that first production that you played in? The first production I played in was um, an operetta by Gilbert and Sullivan called The Pirates of Penzance, and I played Mabel. And it was a high soprano part, and, uh, and that was when I started singing lessons. And I could just, just could do it. I could, I just, because I wasn't afraid. When I teach now, and I do a lot of teaching, most of the time it's trying to get people to not get in their own way. We get in our own way instead of letting something happen. We're always trying to make it happen. And I learned so much. And my first singing teacher, and it was then through that production at school that um, I knew I wanted to sing professionally and um, work towards auditioning for music college. I went to Conservatoire in Manchester to the Royal Northern College of Music and trained as a classical soprano. Yeah. They'd all be horrified if they heard me belting my head off <laughs> for Ellen, but I had a wonderful singing teacher who really understood me as a person as well. It was, it was great because it wasn't a huge role, but it was a crucial role and, and it, was, it was a wonderful show to be part of and especially coming straight after Phantom, Phantom of the Opera, which was much more well, what I had trained, you know, a, a soprano role and, and that, that was incredible. But going into um, Miss Saigon straight from that, to be given the opportunity to do something so different was brilliant. How did that go, your transfer from Phantom of the Opera to Miss Saigon? Well, the producer was Cameron McIntosh, and in fact still is Cameron McIntosh. And um, I had done Little Shop of Horrors for Cameron when I first came down to London. I did Camelot first with Richard Harris, and I was in the ensemble and um, then auditioned within that and got a little role of Nimue, the nymph who lures Merlin um, with a little solo. And, um, and then I auditioned for Little Shop of Horrors and I got the understudy to Ellen Green and went on in previews with no rehearsal. This seems to happen to me a lot. Went on in previews, no rehearsals. Um, and what, what do you mean, no rehearsals? I, well, because I was the understudy. I love how you look shocked. I look, I, you should have seen my face. <laughs> um, and we, we were only in preview, so the, the press night hadn't happened. And so the show was only just open. And I got a phone call to say, uh, by the way, you're on tonight. They pushed me on stage and got through. But in the audience that night in Little Shop of Horrors was um, an actress, I don't know if you know of Joanna Lumley. She's a, an actor at home. and um, But she also had a, a, a diary in the Times newspaper and she devoted her column to my performance because she knew that she got it, you know, as an actor herself. She knows that if a show is in previews, and the understudy is on, you're not going to have had any rehearsal, which is exactly what happened. And um, she wrote a review of my performance, and on the strength of that, Cameron McIntosh asked me to take over. So it was the, the worst and the best day of my life all rolled into one. And, um, and so, I, so Cameron knew that side of my voice, because Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors is quite a, again, a, a belty kind of thing. 
But he also knew that I'd studied classical music and opera, which is why when it came round to the auditions for Phantom, he thought about me. So he's, he's been a wonderful support to me throughout my career, Cameron McIntosh. I owe him a lot. And um, so when, when I was still in Phantom and they'd started doing workshops on um, Miss Saigon, mm-hmm. he asked if I would go and do some of the workshops. And during that time, he, w- he was really just not using me in a bad way, but uh, you know, I was there because they were trying to find the, the guy to play Chris, really. That was a really tough fine so I did a lot of work with a lot of different Chrissies and um and, and it was almost uh, eventually after about six months he said oh by the way we, 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 we've not even told you this but we'd really like you to play Ellen you know we, we don't just want you to do the workshops we'd really like you to play the role and uh, so so I did <laughs> so y- y- you basically created the part of Ellen uh, what part of yourself is in that role well I've never been through anything that she has been through. Um, although, and at the time, I, I was single and didn't have children, either which would have made a difference. I now have two, two children, grown-up children. Um, but I like to, to think that um, I have empathy and I like to think that I would be able to weigh things up in the way that she did. Lots of people used to send... Well, not lots of people, but I would get letters sometimes saying... Dear Claire Moore, you're playing Ellen. Why didn't you kill yourself instead of Kim? <laughs> it would have made life much easier. And, but she was an innocent, and I think Kim was an innocent. And Ellen understood that. So we were both... We were, everybody was a victim in that piece. Um, but I think... I'm from, an, I'm from a northern town in Lancashire where the main industry was coal mining and cotton mills. And we're quite tough. So I think that little bit of me, the, the, the toughness, um, came through in, in Ellen. And I don't know which version of the song, It's Her or Me, now that I've seen her. There were so many different versions, I never know which one we used. But that was a, a pivotal moment um, for her to, to say, I know this is difficult, but I love my husband and I want to fight for him. I'd, I would do that. <laughs> So you just mentioned that there are many versions of the role of Ellen. Um, how do you feel about that? I think it's great. There's a new song now, which um, has been in the, the new London production. And I think that was so hard. I'm really glad I didn't have to sing that. I loved um, Now That I've Seen Her, which is how I... F- that, you know, Now That I've Seen Her, as opposed to It's Her or Me. I, I always think of it as Now That I've Seen Her. And I love the song. And I loved singing the song. It was hard. It was a hard belt. It was big and low and high and, and emotional. And I, and I loved it. And I loved the duet with um, Kim as well and in the first act. Um, so uh, it, it, I loved that song. And I'm sorry that it's not still in the show. But before that song, there was another song uh, which, which never got through rehearsals. We were over halfway through rehearsals when Nick Heitner, our director, decided that actually he didn't feel it was enough of a song and he asked them to write me another song. And that was, that was called What If He Doesn't Come Back Home Tonight? I wonder if it's out there anywhere. But. Can I ask you something about uh, The Phantom? Of course. So you were a voted uh, favourite Christine at one point. <laughs> Is it also your favourite part? It, for, for lots of reasons, I suppose it is. I mean, every role I do is my favourite part at the time, and I've just done a role which which has been glorious, and I've loved it. But I think Christine was a really defining moment for me in my life and my career. It was, you know, Les Mis was already up and running, so that was one of the biggest shows in the world, and then along came Phantom. So you had two of the biggest shows in the world in London, When you think of the tradition of the American musical, you know, and, and I grew up listening to a chorus line and, and, and you know, and suddenly the British musical. I remember um, when Evita opened and seeing Elaine Page on the front page of all the newspapers and just thinking, oh, my God, that would be so wonderful. I never imagined in a million years that I would ever be on the West End stage in any capacity, never mind in a role like that. And so, Christine, I suppose, is really my favourite role. It was a glorious thing to sing. I absolutely loved it. 
and it's remained as part of my life. I teach a lot of Christines. I get sent a lot of Christines to help when they are auditioning. So, uh, so I'm still very involved with the show. That's nice. And and. Do you also still sing songs from Phantom or A Miss Saigon in the shower? Not so much in the shower. They're a bit hard, those, to sing in the shower, <laughs> actually. But I, 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 you're probably asking, best asking my husband what I, what I sing, because I'm probably not even aware of it. But I still, I still sing um, Phantom stuff at concerts. I could still knock out a bit of Think of Me. And, um, but, you know, I've never sung... Um, It's Her or Me, or Now That I've Seen. I've never sung that in a concert. I've done the duet, and I've done the song that was cut, but I've never done that in a concert, so maybe I'll have to come back. Um, I'm doing something... I'm doing Oklahoma for um, playing Aunt Ella um, ne early next year for Grange Opera. In, and I haven't got any plans to go back into the West End at the moment. I've been very, very busy with the show I've just done, which was called The Girls, based on... Calendar Girls, I don't know if you know the, the Helen Mirren and Julie Walters film, and it's been a play and um, written by Gary Barlow from Take That and Tim Firth who did the screenplay and playing, playing the Helen Mirren part, so that has been a big part of my life for the last nearly four years we just finished a run in the West End so I'm happy to have a, a break now, it's hard it's hard, eight shows a week, I mean it's hard enough in your 20s and 30s but But now, you know, because you spend, you know, gone are the days when I could get up and get myself all together on my own and then go to work and stay up all night. And, you know, I have to look after myself. And if I've got a show to do, I spend all day getting myself ready to do the show, making sure that I can get on and be the best I can be. And that gets harder. So I'm having a break. I'm going to until after Christmas. And how do you get yourself ready for a show? Do you have any advice for the amateur musical player? Well, always warm up, really. And, and warm up, don't push it. You know, a warm up is a gentle thing to, to set of exercises for you to know that your voice is working. A lot of warm ups, you know, you, if you're not careful, you've ended up singing too much before you even set foot on stage. So just be kind to yourself. Sing with the voice that you wake up with and warm that up. You know, don't try and be unrealistic. We are humans, we're not robots. Look after yourself. If you feel that you're a bit husky, do some steaming. You have to be selfish. You have to be selfish if you've got a show. But in fact, it, it feels like you're being selfish, but you owe it to the people who are coming to see you. So be kind to yourself and look after yourself. So, final question. <laughs> um, what advice could you give uh, the aspiring musical stars uh, coming tonight? To carry on doing what you're doing. To love every second of performing, because it's such a privilege, and we all get so much out of it. And just be the, be the best you can, but enjoy it, you know, and enjoy being with people. that We're so lucky that we have music and the opportunity to perform in our lives you know um so enjoy it and and if you want to do it professionally have a go i did you know i came from a background where people didn't go on stage people certainly didn't go on stage in any other capacity than amateur and that i was happy with that i was happy with that and then i was lucky I, and i thought well let's have a go and i'm so glad i did and You know, follow your dreams. If it doesn't work out, then at least you've tried. <laughs>